Have you ever been in a situation where time stopped and everything is in slow motion and you're witnessing something and you're like, that's not good. This is not going to end well and there's nothing you can do about it. One time I was working in an office and another employee went to go sit down in a chair and the chair, she went to sit in a chair and I can see it happen, but there's nothing I can do. I couldn't just go dive into the hit my head on the desk. And so she goes to sit and all of a sudden she slips and doesn't sit all the way and falls back and hits her head. That is like, oh my goodness, this is not good. So there are times when you can have vision and see something coming and approaching and you just want to let everybody know and you want to be like, this is not good. And you want to sound an alarm, sound an alarm. Well, I'm here to tell you that today you don't want to be left behind. And no, I'm not talking about the left behind books or the series or the movie. No, that is not what I'm talking about. There's three things that we're going to talk about that we're going to talk about an assumption, a myth and a false belief that a lot of people have that's keeping them stuck in the past. It's like they're watching the same thing over and over again and they're not able to move past it and move beyond it. So let's get into this right now. Did you know our brain is trained to recognize patterns and fill in gaps? And even if the pattern is not even there, our brains will actually create them. See, and this is clearly when you go to a museum and you see a whole bunch of abstract art, or even when you was a kid and you look up into the sky and you look at the clouds and you say, that looks like Santa Claus or that looks like a pirate ship. Our brain is naturally trying to find ways to save time and be able to process information faster. Now, when you say, what about filling in the blanks? I'm not that out of my brain don't fill in blanks. It does. Let's say you hear a song on the radio or you're in the gym and you hear a song and then you hear the person talking and it says beep and then it keeps going. Or it just says it's just a blank space and it keeps going. But your brain is smart enough to use contact clues to actually fill in the blanks. And so as you're hearing it, your brain is automatically interpreting the blanks. So it's no different from hearing it with or without the beeps. It's just the same to you. Unless you're a two-year-old who doesn't know the meaning of the words, your brain is able to actually fill in the blanks. Pretty cool. But the problem happens when we have this assumption. An assumption is just because something always was a certain way doesn't mean that it always will be. Mark Twain once said that history never repeats itself, but it does often rhyme. Assumptions are dangerous, and here's why. There was an experiment that was done with monkeys where a researcher put five monkeys into this large cage and in the center of the cage were a ladder and above the ladder when you climb up the ladder there were some bananas so of course it didn't take long for the monkeys to see the bananas and one of the monkeys said well I'm gonna go for it and so he went to go climb up the ladder and as he was climbing up the ladder the researcher actually sprayed the monkey with cold water and then the monkey was like, what the heck is going on? And then he was bewildered and scrambled back down the ladder. And then the researcher, he also sprayed the other four monkeys that were in the cage. And so they were like, what the heck? And they're all sitting there soaking wet. So then a different monkey says, you know what? I'm going to go for it. So he goes up and tries to climb up the ladder. And the monkey gets sprayed with water. And then all the other four monkeys also get sprayed. And so he comes down off the ladder. And then one more monkey, after a little while later, decides, I'm going to climb up the ladder to get these bananas. I'm hungry. And so he goes to climb up. He gets sprayed and everybody else gets sprayed also. So here's where it gets really good. Well, they take one of the monkeys that was sprayed out of the cage and they put on one monkey that wasn't sprayed. And of course, you will think that the monkey will go up there and try to climb it because he's new. This is a new environment for him, man. He's like, I want that. So he goes to climb up. And of course, the researcher, he doesn't spray them. No. And the other monkeys pulls him down and starts trying to beat him up. Saying, no, don't go up. Don't go up there. So then what happens next is the researcher takes another monkey that originally got sprayed out of the cage. And so now there are three monkeys that were sprayed originally. And then there's two monkeys that haven't been sprayed. And the one monkey that tried to climb up and he didn't get up there because they pulled him down and tried to beat him up. He doesn't go for it. No, it's the new one. As you would think, of course, the new monkey goes and try to climb up the ladder. And this time, everybody pulls him down off the ladder again and tries to beat him up, try to get him to stop 
going up the ladder. But guess what? The monkey that never got sprayed, he joins in on it. So now all four monkeys are trying to get this one monkey not to go up there. So the researcher took all of the original monkeys out of the cage one by one, replaced them with new monkeys. But here's the fascinating thing. It got to the point where all the monkeys in the cage never once got sprayed, yet they were persistent on making sure that new monkeys that entered the cage never got to the top to get those bananas. Assumptions are dangerous because just because something always was doesn't mean that it always will be. However, we listen to everyone that is around us and don't realize that they themselves may not even know why they ever do anything in the first place. There was a time when one person in the village was responsible with keeping all of the stories of their culture. And whenever there was a question that came up, they would go to this one person and the person will go back into their memory and they will pull up the answers to their questions. Now, later, we started having books and then we would record everything in those books. And then we have libraries full of books. Today we have databases filled with information and because we're surrounded with so much information it makes us feel like we're smarter today than the people that were in the past. That's really being just prideful because there's so many things that we don't really understand or don't even know. A proud unteachable spirit is of no use to anybody because it forces itself to repeat the same things, the same beliefs but a humble person is able to receive the blessing that God has, while a proud person rejects it because they think they already know better. We're surrounded with information, but how much time do we take to actually understand what we're surrounding ourselves with? For instance, the Israelites had access to the whole Old Testament. The Pharisees and the Sadducees completely missed it. Jesus was the the living word in front of them, and they did not recognize them. Well, it's because they had assumptions about what it is that he was going to be and do and stuff like that. Well, they also mean that they didn't actually take the time to actually open their minds to see things from a different perspective. John the Baptist said that he was a voice calling out in the wilderness. This was preparing the people's minds so that they would be able to receive what it is that Jesus had to give to them. But it required a mind shift. And so a lot of times we want to go to these new levels in life, but we're still trying to carry the same old mindset. And so we have to get rid of that mindset in order to embrace a new thing. See, our God is very big and he can do a lot of different things. But the other reality is we have to grow into the people that are able to handle the things that he has for us. God has given you everything you need to succeed, but you have to recognize the seed. See, a lot of times we just say, give me the bread, but I don't want the seeds. But the seed is holds the potential, and the potential allows it to bear more fruit. From God's perspective, he sees our lives from beginning to end. And what we look at and say, oh my goodness, there's a giant barrier in front of me, he sees as a stepping stone for us to climb up to greater heights. And if we don't recognize those things, we're going to miss it. So while we're trying to make ourselves aware of every latest trend that happens, we also need to make sure that we seek understanding. James says that we should ask for wisdom, but we also have to understand that God is not going to do our part and we can't do his part. And our part is to take the things that God has given us and the instructions and apply them. Here's the nugget of truth. A bank teller deals with currency all day long and they're counting it. Now, when they come up against a counterfeit, guess what? They're able to feel the difference because they deal with the real stuff all day long. So you have to surround yourself with the truth so that you'll be able to expose and become aware of the strongholds, the lies that you tell yourself. Jesus spent a lot of time around a lot of different people, but he always made time for his father because his father's will is what he wanted to do. He wanted to be about his father's business. So sometimes you're going to have to separate yourself from other individuals to make sure that you're able to do the thing in which you were created and meant to do because people will hold you back out of their own insecurities. But you can't let that stop you. And you can't let the assumptions that you have about your past and about who you could be hold you back because God knows who you are. And you have to tap into that reality of who God says you are so that you can do what he says you can do. You are designed to prosper. This is the Wealthy Mindset Podcast. I am your host, Roberto Swift, and I am out.